Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome our first speaker or in this room, uh, Dimitri Rebenko. Uh, Dimitri was an intern in my team at Apple um, over the summer. And he's going to talk about his work on parsing documentation comments and Clang. Dimitri. Thank you, Ted, for the introduction. So hi, everyone. And today I want to talk about parsing documentation comments. It's well known that Clang is more than just a compiler. It's a set of libraries that allow us to build different kinds of tools to process C++ sources. And among those kinds of tools, one the most particular area is the source editor tools that allow you to enhance your IDEs with such source editor features as code completion, syntax highlighting, getting list of diagnostics, and compiling your code to ensure that it's correct. So libclan currently has a solid interface that exposes those kind of interfaces to enable building source editor tools. But one particular error where Clang is still lacking is documentation comment support. So today I'm going to talk about a new feature in Clang. So the outline of my talk. First, I'm going to talk why do you want this feature in Clang and uh, why, do existing tool, why existing tools are not good enough. Then I will talk about, hi, hi, I will highlight some important implementation details. And after that, I will show you some user visible features that are already available and you can try them right now. So why do you want this feature in Clang? Why existing tools like Doxygen for documentation processing and extraction are not good enough? Well, here are the, a couple of reasons. First of all, as the program tends to evolve, the actual logic inside your program tends to differ from what you specify in comments. <laughs> yeah, that's a very common reason why comments tend to be thrown as you go and evolve and improve your program. While we cannot check for deep semantic differences uh, between the comment and the program logic that would require some natural language processing, we can check for some simple semantic differences like all named entities that are referenced inside comments should really exist inside your program. That's a very simple semantic check, but it helps to find lots of stale and incomplete and somewhat incorrect comments. Next, programmers don't run the documentation extraction tool unless they need to. Well, for example, in LVM development process, Doxygen is being run non-interactively after each commit, and nobody reads Doxygen messages because documentation is automatically updated on the website, so programmers don't really care about Doxygen, and they don't see all the useful diagnostics Doxygen displays to them. So it would be nice to have documentation extraction to be integrated inside the usual compile cycle so that the programmer will see all the messages from the documentation extraction tool. Next, documentation extraction tools only try to understand C++. They don't really understand C++. They use some regular expression-based technique to parse C++ code, but obviously that's not good enough because C++ grammar is not parsable with regular expressions. But that has an obvious advantage. Regular documentation extraction tools are very fast, and they can process incomplete and somewhat invalid C++ code. They can process header files in isolation, so it has some advantages, but they will fail in complicated cases. And of course, tools that people build with Clang will also ignore documentation comments, and that's very important because we have lots of tools that need to understand comments. For example, source editor tools. Programmer can ask the source editor to display some comment for the entity under the cursor. And unless client implements documentation extraction, source editor will need to re-implement comment finding and parsing. And of course, refactoring tools need also to find and understand and change comments. Imagine one of the simplest possible refactorings, like function parameter name. In this case, uh, this is a very simple and uh, localized refactoring that is localized to a single translation unit. It should be very simple to do. You just replace the identifier within the function declaration and the function body. But unless you also update the comment, you will be introducing an inconsistency 
between the comment and the actual implementation. So refactoring tools really need to understand what's written inside the comments and they need to understand all the references to different kinds of entities inside comments. So what kind of goals do we see for this project? First of all, we want to help the programmers to keep their comments up to date, syntactically and semantically correct. Next, we want to provide a good APIs for tools that other people build with Clang libraries so that they can enhance source editor tools with common support and refactoring tools that are built with modern AST matchers and modern rewriters and other tools that Clang provides that refactoring tools should be also be able to write comments. And maybe someone will use this infra infrastructure to build a better documentation extraction tool that really does understand C++ code. There are multiple popular syntaxes that are used for writing documentation comments, and we couldn't start by supporting all of them. So that's why we picked Doxygen, because in C++ world, documentation comments approximately means Doxygen. Most of people use Doxygen syntax. Now I want to highlight some important implementation details. So first of all, we find comments. After that, we attach them to declarations. After that, we do the actual parsing of comments, and we get a comment ST, which I will also describe. So I will first talk about attaching comments to AST nodes. That was the second bullet in my previous slide. Why? Because this decision uh, is the most important, because it dictates the whole structure of our project. So Clang's Lexer can already expose their comments as uh, talk column column common tokens. And it seemed like a natural idea to teach the parser to consume this token before it constructs a declaration. Well, it turned out to be not feasible in practice. First of all, our parser is already complicated enough. Well, that's not a disadvantage. It's parsing C++ code. So, but uh, adding additional checks for common tokens would complicate it even further. Next, uh, there would be lots of these checks everywhere because a comment can come between two, uh, any two tokens. And uh, checking for a common token between consuming any two tokens would really add a lot of checks to our parser. And since uh, this uh, change would be very invasive for Clang's parser, there would be no easy way to turn it off so that we can remove all the overhead of this parsing whenever we don't need it. That's why we chose to uh, not to expose common tokens to the parser, but keep them separate and let the parser construct the AST and attach comments to AST nodes afterwards. So how do we find raw comments and where do we keep them? On top, you can see the normal client pipeline that consists of the lexer, parser, and semantic analysis. We don't expose common tokens to the parser, but instead we install a comment handler that just extracts a comment as a string reference and a social location and passes it on to a separate semantic analysis method. After that, we check if this comment looks like a documentation comment. If it doesn't look like a documentation comment, we don't even process it further. If it does look like a documentation comment, then we store it in the AST context uh, there is a separate vector for all documentation comments that's sorted in the source order. Here are the documentation comment syntaxes that we support. Like Doxygen, we recognize a documentation comment by the first few characters of the comment. And if the comment does not look like, does not have any of these starting sequences, then we just throw it away. So on the left, you can see comments that document the uh, declaration that goes after the comment, and on the right you can see the so-called trailing comments that document the previous declaration. And it turns out that these trailing comments are a good source of confusion for programmers. For example, here we have something that looks like a trailing comment, but in fact it isn't. These comments have a single slash or a single star missing. And we had lots of these in our LVM and plan code base. So I implemented a warning that when we throw away 
a comment that starts with a less sign, we emit a warning that, hey, look, this looked like a Duxygen comment, but it isn't, and we also need to fix it. Next, we attach comments to AST nodes. So on the right, we have this vector sorted in source order, and on the left, we have the actual comments. So imagine that someone asks for a comment for this do something declaration. First of all, we do a binary search on this vector of comments, and we find the next comment after this declaration. We check if this, a, if this is a trailing comment. In this case, obviously, it's not a trailing comment, so we go ahead and check the previous comment. And for the previous comment, we need to check if this comment should be attached to the declaration, if there is something in between the comment and the declaration. In order to do that, we do a very simple thing. We extract all the text after the end of the comment and before the location of the, of the declaration. And we check if this text, in this case it is VOID space, if this text contains a comma, semicolon, or curly braces. <laughs> this looks like a very simple and dumb heuristic, but it works fairly well in practice. So in this case, we see that there is no special character in this text, and we attach this comment to the declaration. In case someone asks for a comment for this do something interesting declaration, we will extract this text from void, do something else, parent, parent, semicolon. We will find a semicolon, and we will not attach this comment to the declaration. Next. Uh, well, I was just explaining how do we attach comments to declaration when someone asks for a comment for a specific declaration. But during a normal compile cycle, the user will want to see diagnostics for all comments. So we want to parse and attach all possible comments to all possible declarations. That's why all semantic analysis methods that uh, construct a declaration that could possibly have a comment now call the SEMA act on documentable declaration. And it calls the AST context method that does the binary search procedure I described before. It consults the comments vector, invokes all the required parsing machinery, and saves the comment AST inside the parsed, com inside the parsed comments mapping so that we don't parse the same comment twice. It turns out that while this uh, procedure I described before seems very natural and simple, everything is not so simple in real cases. In real cases, uh, when someone queries us for a comment for some particular declaration, that declaration does not have a comment, but some related declaration does have a comment, and we want to pick that one. So in this case, if someone asks for a comment for the second declaration, we will not find any. But there is another declaration that has a comment. So we should search the whole declaration chain to pick up the correct comment. And it's also very important to parse that comment in context of the declaration it is syntactically attached to, so that we will resolve all the parameter name references correctly. In the declaration, there could be different names for the same parameters. Here is another example when we pick uh, comments from some other related declaration. Here, here we have a base class and a derived class, and uh, we have a function that overrides some function in the base class. So we have to also search all base classes for related comments. Next, comment parsing pipeline. Comment parsing, uh, comment lexing parsing, and semantic analysis design in general reflects the design of the Clang's lexer, parser, and semantic analysis for C and C++ code. But there is a small difference. We have a single lexer, but we have two parsers. The first parser will uh, go ahead and call semantic analysis methods to construct an AST for comments. But the second parser will just go through all the tokens the lexer produces and will extract just the brief description of the declaration. Why is that important? Well, the full parser will construct the AST, do lots of memory allocations, do lots of semantic checks, find all other declarations that are referenced inside the comment. This is lots of work. And the brief parser will just go through all the tokens and do a single memory allocation for the brief comment. So it is very, very fast. And we use this brief parser 
in uh, code completion, so that when the user uh, gets a list of code completion results, he will also get a brief description for each completion result. And uh, it's very important to return this completion result set very fast, because it directly, uh, directly reflects the code completion latency. That's why we have a separate parser for just brief descriptions. So the comment AST. Comment AST design. Oh, there is no heading. <laughs> so the comment AST design is uh, inspired by the HTML design. We have the notion of block content and inline content. Block content is something like a paragraph or a multi-line code block that looks like a block and should be rendered like a block. The root node has children which are block content. And the paragraph has children which are inline content. So block content is something like a paragraph or a block command like backslash brief. What is a block command? A block command is a command that implicitly starts a paragraph. So that paragraph can be considered an argument to this command. Or backslash repeating, which starts a code block and it's everything up to backslash and verbatim. And there is inline content. Text is inline content, inline commands which specify text formatting is also an inline content. And all HTML tags are also considered inline content. Well, this was a hard design decision, but it's too easy to create yet another broken HTML parser. So we decided not to. And we just leave all the HTML tags as a tag soup and we don't construct any AST for HTML. Here is an example of a comment and the corresponding IST. So we have three block commands and a single block command node for each block command. So let's look at the first backslash brief command. It has a paragraph as an argument and this paragraph has two inline, inline content blocks. So the first one is just a text run, does something with. And the second one is the backslash p command, which has str dot as its argument. The second one is more interesting. It's a param command. Param command is special enough. It requires some special parsing for parameter parsing direction. And we should parse these brackets with in or out or in out keywords. So we decided to create a special AST node for it. And uh, well, that's it. It has a paragraph that has the description of the parameter as an argument. And the returns command is just like a backslash brief command. It has a paragraph as an argument. So now I want to talk about some user visible features that we have, that we have already implemented. First of all, we have diagnostics for comments. We want to ensure that the user has their comments up to date, syntactically and semantically correct. We, all, we have also enhanced code completion APIs in ellipclang, and to facilitate building other tools that process comments, we have comment export as XML documents. And of course, I will talk about performance because performance is a user-visible feature. Diagnostics. It's not only important to just parse the comment somehow. It's important to tell the user that we have found something wrong with his comment a syntactic error or semantic error or some parameter name mismatch, something like that. And we have a couple of semantic errors here. Syntactic errors are boring. I will not bother talking about them. So semantic errors. We check that parameter names referenced inside the comments do really match the parameter names inside the function declaration. In this case, the user has misspelled the parameter name. They have the case of the first letter wrong, and we emit a warning and we also emit a fix it that's based on the edit distance between the parameter name inside the comment and the parameter name inside the function declaration. <coughs> we check that backslash returns command is used to document a function that actually has a return value. In this case, the function returns void, so we emit a diagnostic. Copying and pasting code is a well-known source of mistakes. But well, copying and pasting comments is a well-known source of mistakes too. So we check that backslash param is used to document each parameter at most once. If there is duplicate documentation, there is obviously something wrong going on here. So we emit a diagnostic. There is a backslash deprecated command 
in Doxygen. It's used to mark some declaration as deprecated, so other programmers will not use it. But there is an attribute deprecated in C++. And there is already some infrastructure in compilers that can check and emit diagnostics if you actually use some deprecated declaration. So in order to meaningfully deprecate something, you have to put the attribute. And the backslash deprecated inside the comment is just something useful for other programmers to read your comment. So if we find backslash deprecated inside a comment as it is attached to a declaration that's not deprecated, we emit a diagnostic and a suggestion to put attribute deprecated. But it turns out that most programmers will want their code to be portable. And they will define some kind of portability macro, like my deprecated, that expands to the deprecation attribute depending on which compilers they, they use. If you find this kind of portability macro, we will suggest to use that portability macro instead. I want to thank Alexander Kunienko for doing all the required macro history infrastructure work that made this kind of diagnostics and clan possible. Well, uh, what's macro history? It allows one to query what macros are defined at any source location inside the file, so that we don't suggest a macro that was already undeft at that source location. Well, it's a natural question. Can we turn on all these awesome warnings for LVM and clan code base? And it turns out that we are almost there. There are just a few warnings left. And those warnings are like deeply semantic warnings that cannot be fixed mechanically. And I could not fix them. James Dennett could not fix them. So I would encourage everyone to just build their LLVM and clan with these extra arguments and just look for uh, look through the list of diagnostics and check if you can fix those diagnostics. Well, I want to thank James Dennett for fixing most of the Doxygen warnings. He did this work before I started implementing Dash W documentation, and after Dash W documentation was implemented, I did some of the remaining cleanup. But there is still more cleanup for you to do. Next user visible feature is enhanced code completion. Code completion results consist of the suggested text or pattern to insert and some additional information that will help the programmer to decide is this, completion, is this completion result the one that you are looking for or not. And we have some information like completion priority, availability information, but we are missing some critical part of the information. And that is some user readable description. That is the brief documentation. So here we use the brief documentation extraction parser. And here is what it does. It just looks for a paragraph that's marked with backslash brief, and it extracts that. Or if there is no backslash brief inside the comment, it will just grab the first paragraph. That is very simple, and that's why it's very fast and doesn't really affect the latency of code completion. We have also XML export of comments in order to facilitate building other tools that process comments. Well, first, by XML? Why not expose an API to traverse the AST? Well, we, have an, we also have an API to, to traverse the comment AST, but it turned out to be very bulky and not very useful and easy, and easy to use. I don't think anyone would uh, use an API that reflects some internal AST. So we decided to provide some XML for XML serialization of the AST. And we tried to implement this feature as correctly as possible from the XML perspective. That's why we have a schema. And we have automated tests that check that the output we produce is actually valid according to this schema. That's why you can see that latest Clang optionally depends on libxml in order to run some unit tests. And the XML document includes uh, the parsed comment in some XML serialization, and it includes some additional information about the comments. It allows the XML document consumer, like an IDE, to render this comment in some sensible way for the user. So what kind of additional information I'm talking about? Well, here is a comment, and here is a corresponding XML document fragment. We have the root tag that explains what kind of declaration this is. 
In this case, this is a function, and it's not just a simple function, it's a function template. And we have source location information. And we also have the, decla the declaration pretty printed here. I should note that our declaration pretty printer is not very good at this moment. It has some deficiencies and some complicated C++ cases are not print pretty printed good enough. Well, that's understandable because it was implemented just for debugging purposes. And now we want to expose it to some developers and users. So maybe there is something that should be fixed with declaration printed. But for most general cases, it is good enough. And performance. Performance is usually a visible feature, and we want this feature to be as lightweight as possible for normal compiled cycles. First of all, we parse documentation comment, comments only if the user requested the diagnostics. But we always track comment locations. That's why if you have lots of documentation comments in your code base, and by lots I mean tens of thousands of documentation comments, then you might see a less than 5% regression in your parse time. And uh, I should stress that this is only a regression in parse time. We should pass dash f syntax only to make this regression measurable. So I hope that nobody really has tens of thousands of documentation comments in their code base. But if you do, you are already very lucky. Next, we have identified that uh, if you really do have a lot of documentation comments, most of these come from system headers. And it doesn't really make sense to parse documentation comments in system headers in order to produce diagnostics. So we just keep documentation comments from system headers. And uh, if you are developing some kind of tool that wants to see all documentation comments, like a documentation extraction tool or a code completion function inside an ADE that will display documentation for all kinds of functions, then you can pass dash f time comments from system headers, and you will get all your comments back. So there is a project called Clan Complete, which is a Vim plugin, and it implements a uh, semantic code completion for Vim using libclang APIs. I have enhanced this project to use the brief documentation features of libclang, and now I want to show you how it works. So here I have a Vim editor that has some source file with a few declarations and documentation comments. So we have a struct that has a documentation comment and we it has a member function that has documentation comment. We have just a plain function with documentation comment and implementation of that function without a comment. So let's try using the square function. I type sq, call control x, control u, choose the relevant completion, and I see a separate buffer popping up on top, which has the function declaration and the corresponding documentation comment which helped me to choose the, cor the correct completion. So I can choose that one. Let's try also using the code completion feature for class names like foo. It also works. I type fo, I press control x, control u. I see the list of code completions. I choose the relevant one, and I see a documentation comment for this class. And I should note that we have just a very important class here, while the documentation comment also has some additional formatting commands and instructions. And these are all skipped by the brief documentation parser. We can also try declaring a variable of this type and calling a member function. And it also works with member function and we see brief documentation for member functions. So that's it. Uh, this feature is currently implemented in my fork of Clan Complete. So if you want to try it on your own, you are free to download a copy of my repository here. 
but I'm currently working to get this merged back to the upstream clan complete repository. So yeah, feel free to try this. There are some issues regarding the serialization of information between the Python backend that calls libclang APIs and the representation of information in Vim. We should pass the information somehow between Python and Vim, and there is some issue with that. We are trying to resolve it currently. And here is a list of future work projects, which are ordered in order of increasing complexity. So the first one, very simple, would be to resolve parameter names in backslash p command, which refers to parameters declared inside this function. Somehow I missed this in my initial implementation. Maybe someone could fix this, or I will fix it later. Next, we could resolve declaration references inside the command. And this is really challenging, because programmers will put references to all kinds of declarations and call all kinds of syntactic features of C++. For example, programmers may put declaration references to declarations that are declared inside other translation unit. Or they might put references to some imaginary entities. And obviously, we don't want to warn about that. So there are some challenges and trade-offs regarding the correct parsing of declaration references. We also want to attach comments to macros. Because currently, as you have seen, we only consider some AST level details like declarations. Macros are, where, are a very important part of the C and C++ languages, so we should not ignore them. And we should probably modify the preprocessor also to attach comments to macros. And there is an AST matcher project. I don't know actually if we do need AST matchers for comment AST, just because we don't yet know how a typical refactoring tool will look like. And this typical refactoring tool will need to update comments somehow. Maybe AST matchers is a good approach for modifying comments, but maybe we should provide some um, functions that just rename a named entity inside the comment, and that would be good enough for most refactoring tools. And other refactoring tools that need special needs might use the comment visitor interface that we also provide. It would, be, it would be nice to integrate this feature with other IDEs, but maybe it should happen after Clang D is implemented. Well, Clang D is a Clang service architecture, like a Clang daemon that runs in background and allows an ID to query that daemon for all kinds of stuff that we currently use libclang to, like code completion, code compiling, syntax highlighting, etc. And it would be nice if someone wrote a better documentation extraction tool that really understands C++. But first, we might need to fix the declaration printer. To summarize, Clang can now parse documentation comments. It can find semantic and syntax errors inside comments. And you should also try dash double documentation on your own code right now. Just check out Clang from SVN repository and use the dash double documentation flag. And we can also export comments as XML documents to facilitate building new tools that process comments. And well, that's it. This work enables more awesome features in future. This is mostly infrastructure work. And you are welcome to build more awesome tools. So thank you very much. I'm happy to answer your questions. So it seems like the, your comment posture is, is pretty much tied to, to Doxygen, that sort of thing. I wonder if an enhancement would be to uh, generalize it such that um, it could collect comments that could be used for, for other things. For example, uh, suppose I wanted to annotate uh, function or class members with a, with a comment that gave it additional information, and, and I wanted to write a plugin that would kind of walk the AST and pull out those things. Uh, like perhaps you could input, a, uh, define a pragma that defines some, some kind of pattern that would identify those comments and also attach it to an AST. That's I see. That's something we, we actually consider doing. That's why our parser is extensible. And uh, we don't do parsing, uh, we don't do special parsing for some particular command like best slash verbatim. We already have a class of commands 
like uh, a verbatim code block, and backslash verbatim is just one of those commands. And you might want to declare your command inside the table gen files that describes the commands, and you will want to put in inside one of the classes we have. Most probably, if you want some code blocks that affect semantics of your program, that it will be a verbatim-like command. And after that, you would write cement additional semantic analysis for that. So our parser is actually extensible, but uh, it is limited to doxygen-like syntax currently. So a command should start with backslash, we interpret doxygen-like uh, escape sequences, and so on. Actually, our AST is not limited to doxygen-like syntaxes. So we might want to implement some different kinds of lexer and parser and semantic analysis, but reuse the same AST nodes. So I know that someone uses XML syntax for comments. That would be very easy to write a parser for. And we might reuse existing AST nodes for that, too. So I hope this answers your question. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Yes, please. So your comments don't have the special doxygen-like starting sequence. No, they don't have. Well, what you could do, possibly, is that you could go to the place where we throw away non-documentation comments, and you turn that on. But for regular code bases, that will bring in lots of false positives where we attach something unrelated to the declaration and consider it a documentation comment. So it's certainly doable, but it's much better in terms of user experience to attach only documentation comments to declarations. So it's certainly doable, but I don't know how it will work for general code bases. So you, you said that uh, Clang and LVM have 99% um, passing. I assume that means you're not checking for declarations that are missing doc comments. Of course, and we don't have a warning for that, because right. it would be extremely noisy. And uh, as I also showed on my slides, yes, here, we are not parsing dash w documentation deprecated sync, and that's about backslash deprecated and annotation and uh, attribute deprecated being in sync. We have quite a lot of functions that are marked as deprecated, but having lots of usages. <laughs> So maybe we should either remove the backslash deprecated or go ahead and remove all the usages. You, you also said um, that you check for declarations uh, in between the comments using a fairly simple just scan for semicolons thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I've noticed with Doxygen and similar tools is that they're really, really bad at declarations that are generated from macros. Um, and it sounds like that technique would have the same problem because if your declaration is generated from a macro, it won't have a semicolon in it necessarily. Well, uh, we work on preprocessed source, as far as I know. I, I haven't actually tried, so I'm just making things up. But I think if the comment would be inside the macro expansion, we should. Uh, actually attach it to the declaration. But, but I'm the, not entirely sure and I haven't tried this. So I mean, the, the way this pattern normally works is you'll have the doc comment and then you'll have a macro which creates the, um, uh, mm. the declaration. So if you have a set of comments. Oh, I see. So you have a documentation comment before you call a macro, right? Yeah. I don't think we will attach the comment in that case because the macro expansion will have a different file ID than the file ID of the main source file and we will not attach in this case. Might be something to fix, thank you. Well, thank you very much for your attention.